shoddy parts to something that barely qualifies as a car, this is our list of the worst cars to have ever been made. Not all cars are created equal, but not some are so bad you wonder why they were created at all. For every quality car that stood the test of time, there are plenty out there that failed so spectacularly they are still remembered to this day. Terrible mileage, shoddy builds, and just outright bizarre design choices have left us with some serious lemons. First up on our list is the 1975 Trabant. This car was once described by Time Magazine as the car that gave communism a bad name. Oof. Now that alone should give you an idea of how crummy this car is. But let's dig a little into the details here. So, the Trabant was originally designed as an alternative to the Volkswagen Beetle. It had a two-stroke engine capable of pumping out an incredible 26 horsepower. Look at that baby go! The body is made out of duroplast, a sort of fiberglass-esque material and reinforced with recycled fibers like cotton and wood. It is ridiculously loud and cranks out more smoke than Snoop Dogg with a flamethrower. The commies decided that a true proletariat car didn't need bourgeoisie features like brake lights or a fuel gauge. Because of its awful specs, the Trabant is remembered as easily one of the worst cars in history. Thousands of East Germans drove these babies across the border after the fall of the Berlin Wall. In a truly wonderful analogy for the fall of the Soviet Union, many of their drivers immediately abandoned these shoddy disasters, leaving them to rot in open fields. There, at least, they finally saw some use, as sheep and cow discovered the duroplast and fiber side was edible. Next up, we have the Suzuki X90, another terrible memory from the mid-90s. The X90 looks more like a toy than an actual car. It's small, ugly, and with a Targa roof, just in case you wanted people to see your face while you were driving this joke of a car, according to Suzuki, this thing is an SUV. Now, the two-seater does actually pack the height of a sport utility vehicle, as well as rear and four-wheel drive. It's let down by its meager power output. Its 1.6-liter four-cylinder can only boast 94 horsepower. To absolutely no one's surprise, the X90 did not take off. Suzuki only managed to move 7,000 of them in the States. It was marketed with a tagline, what are you staring at? I don't know, Suzuki. I really don't know. For this next car, we're going to have to go back in time to change some perceptions. Because we are talking about the one and only DMC DeLorean. Now, there is no two ways around it. The DeLorean was a terrible car. Don't get me wrong, its design was iconic as hell, no doubt due to its role as the time machine in the Back to the Future movies. Its sleek metallic body with those awesome gull doors, there's a reason why it looked like the car of the future. But honestly, no one would remember this car if it weren't for those films. It was heavy and underpowered. Its 2.85-liter V6 PRV engine never stood a chance against the sports cars DeLorean was competing against. Its crummy acceleration meant that it would struggle to get to 88 miles per hour, only managing not to 60 in 10.5 seconds. Crates got that slow. Not only that, but the DeLorean wasn't cheap either. It was released in 1981 with a price tag of 25 k which is the equivalent of about 80000 today. Despite all this, the DeLorean does still have a cult following to this day, with many enthusiasts still driving them to this day. It's estimated that there are as many as 6,500 of them still on the road today. That's better than most of the cars on this list, honestly. The Cadillac was the symbol of American luxury, but the company almost tanked due to the disaster of the Camaron. The car was Cadillac's hasty attempt to compete with smaller European luxury cars. But seriously, they were so lazy that it almost single-handedly ruined the company's reputation. General Motors slapped some upmarket trim on the Chevrolet Cavalier, doubled the price, and called it a day. The 1.8-liter four-cylinder engine produced 88 horsepower and performed terribly compared to the Mercedes-Benz and BMW competition. Would-be buyers saw the pathetic attempt to rebadge a bad Chevy as a true Cadillac to be a slap in the face. 
The damage that this did to the Cadillac's reputation nearly killed the brand, and it's something the company has never really lived down. The next car is a more modern flop in General Motors history, the Chevy SSR. The Super Sport Roadster has a very bizarre design. Seeking to capitalize on the aughts retro movement, GM went with a weird pickup truck convertible combo in this 2003 release. Now, the SSR packed some pretty respectable stats. A 6-liter V8 with 390 horsepower meant it could make 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Not bad, right? Unfortunately, it just never really found its market. I'm not sure that market even exists. The Ford Pinto is probably the best performing car on this list. First produced in 1971, it packed a 1.6 liter Kent engine that gave the car a lot of grunt for an affordable subcompact. It was also surprisingly nimble with good visibility and a sports car feel. So what was the problem? Well, the car had this tiny little problem where it would catch fire. See, because of the placement of the fuel tank between the rear bumper and the axle, the Pinto was prone to catch fire even in a minor rear-end bingle. Ford executives were aware of the fuel tank issue but did nothing about it after they calculated it would be cheaper to pay off lawsuits than re-engineer the car. The fact that Ford didn't seem to care about the danger this served for the people actually driving their shoddy car caused a lot of public outrage. The controversy around this major design fault completely changed the landscape of business ethics and safety regulations. The Pinto was subsequently recalled en masse, so if you see one on the used car lot, steer clear. The Rodius was produced by the Korean firm Sang Yong from 2005 to 2013 and is really here for its questionable design choices. According to the manufacturer, the look of the Rodius was inspired by luxury yachts, but I certainly don't see it. The car looks like someone poorly stitched together a standard sedan with the boot of a van. The line of the door frame drops, but the roof continues straight to the back of the car. Somehow, the Rodius manages to be both rounded and boxy at the same time. This seven-seater was good for getting a lot of people around as long as you didn't need to get anywhere particularly fast. The 2.7 Mercedes diesel engine meant the Rodius took 14 seconds to clear 0 to 60. Yikes. The Rodius was such a colossal failure that it depreciated incredibly quickly, with all versions losing more than 75% of their value after three years. Now, no list of terrible cars would be complete without this last one, the Reliant Robin. Don't be fooled by the name. The Robin is pretty far from reliable. Now, the most notable feature is obviously the fact that the Robin only has three wheels. A bit odd for a car, right? Well, it turns out that originally the Robin was actually classified as a motorcycle. Yep, apparently this thing is closer to a motorcycle than a car, but it's got doors, seats, and a steering wheel, so I will give it a pass. Apparently the fact that it wasn't technically a car was a big part of the reason it sold as well as it did in the UK, because it could be driven with a motorcycle license. It was seen as a great option for carless motorcyclists to drive in the harsh winter weather. It launched in 1932 with a 750cc four-cylinder engine. Because the Robin is made of fiberglass and tiny to boot, its top speed is 85 miles per hour with 70 miles to a gallon of gas. Zippy little thing, don't you think? Well, the problem is the Robin has a reputation for easily flipping over, which has definitely been exaggerated in TV. In particular, when it was featured in an episode of Top Gear, a modified Robin was used so that it would flip over even more easily for comic effect. Not that it needed that much help to look funny. Many enthusiasts will sing the praises of the Reliant Robin. So long as you live in places with a lot of very straight roads, the experience of driving a Robin is very wobbly, like the first time you take the training wheels off a bike. Corners are a nightmare, and the Robin is helpless against its natural predator, the roundabout. Oh, also, there is no reverse. Honestly, this has got to be one of the most baffling car designs in history. But I guess someone had to try a three-wheeler, didn't they? So there you have it. From shoddy parts to something that barely qualifies as a car, these were the worst cars to have ever been made.